Hello, lovelies, and thanks again for listening to Listen Closely. I am your host, Bobby, and I am again without John this week. He is off to Halls of Horror, helping out Mr. Jason and bringing you the spookiest, creepiest haunted house and escape room possible. They are getting closer and closer to finishing, and I'm just saying I'm currently not wanting to walk through it. Like, they're not even done with the whole rooms But the more and more that they do is the more and more I don't want to walk in it. Like, I'm not one to really be scared easily. Obviously, I'm kind of in this profession of going ghost hunting and, you know, going to these different places that we talk about. And that doesn't seem to scare me as much as the things that come out of Jason's head into this Halls of Horror. Like, it is definitely one for the books for this year. So definitely check them out this year. You can find him on Facebook, Halls of Horror. They're located here in Silsby, Texas. And I'm like I said, I'm just saying they're they're amazing. Like I there's no words for it. You just gotta see it. This episode is actually being recorded on the 15th, which is today, and edited and everything because we had some technical difficulties. My system at home was kind of going haywire and just not wanting to work. And I'm not saying it was Friday the 13th bad luck, but I'm saying that it started to happen on Friday the 13th. Um, If you followed me on my Instagram and Facebook, I said that there were going to be some giveaways happening and some little trivia and things like that. Like I had plans for Friday the 13th. And because my system was going crazy, I just could not get it out fast enough and again with this episode it was just not going to happen so we had to re-record this episode so this is a brand new recording that's just kind of what we work with in this kind of business and that's that's fine um but definitely keep staying tuned for different giveaways there might be some smaller ones happening and this is going to be happening all spooky season so like from august until halloween maybe even past it i don't even know But definitely keep listening in, listen to the episodes, check out my Facebook, my Instagrams, my TikToks. You never know where I'm going to do a giveaway or what I'm going to ask you to do for said giveaway. I might say, just follow me on Facebook and then, you know, bonus points if you follow me on my other social medias. I'm not sure how I'm going to do them exactly, but you definitely need to tune in because there might be some Halls of Horror tickets. We're going to be partnering with Halls of Horror. I'm so gracious that Jason's going to allow us to help him out. So definitely keep listening in for that. Um, They're still going to happen. They're just a little bit delayed because of these technical difficulties, but they're still coming and you don't want to miss out. For this episode, we are going back to Huntsville for part two of Demon Road. So this one is actually over the Martha's Chapel Cemetery. And I'll real quickly want to make a note that the Demon Road and Martha's Chapel Cemetery is not actually in Huntsville. They are actually about seven miles southwest of Huntsville. So like the outskirts of Huntsville nowadays, if that makes any sense. You know, like, it's not in the dead center of Huntsville or Huntsville. It's like, you know, just the barely outskirts of it. So I just want to make that known because when my husband tried to look up some of these things, he was like, oh, it's not actually in Huntsville. No, it is not actually in, like, the town of Huntsville. It's off on the, like, the outer skirts of it. So I just want to real quickly give that little note just so that way we are clear on where this is it's about seven miles southwest of huntsville again this is down a dirt road you take demon road aka bowden road to get to martha chapel cemetery road which takes you to martha's chapel cemetery this cemetery belong to a church community known as Robinson Settlement. The cemetery is in the middle of what was the settlement back in the day. And if you know anything about old settlements, what they had basically was the church, the schoolhouse or meeting houses, and then, you know, just a couple houses. That's really all they had back in the day. So there weren't, you know, fancy movie theaters or anything like that. Like we're thinking way back in the day. The designation of Martha's Chapel was possibly derived from one of the names of the first church members buried in the new church's cemetery, whose name is Martha Palmer. Uh, She was a wife of a church trustee, Anthony C. Palmer, and many believe that the cemetery got that name after her. Now, this is the new cemetery for that church. So there were two different cemeteries. You know, I mean, you had the cemetery, like the regular older one. And then 
once they kind of grew up some and they needed more room and obviously you know they built different churches and chapels and stuff well they had built another one or the newer addition to that cemetery and that's how they believe that Martha Chapel Cemetery got its name since really the beginning it has been a land full of mysterious happenings and to give a little bit of background so they believe one of the stories is is that there was a coven in the area and the coven is the one who kind of did a ritual to bring out the demons and bad things into that area and that is why that the Martha Chapel Cemetery and the Demon Road are so active in the paranormal is that this coven brought things out that shouldn't have been brought out and made it to where it is today. Um, If you listen to Demon Road, you heard about that pale creature, monstrous thing that kind of hides in the bushes and on the road and seems to jump out or, you know, run around and you like you can't look at him. So he calls that cemetery his home, but then he also ventures out into the forest and onto the road leading up to the cemetery, which is why I said Demon Road. Like you have the actual Demon Road, which is Bowden Road, but then off of Bowden Road, you have Martha Chapel Cemetery Road. And that one is the one that I believe people see more things on because that's the one leading into the cemetery, into the craziness. And while we're talking about this, you know, faceless monster demon thing, I want to real quickly point out something that I didn't actually think about when I was recording last week's episode. It was actually my father who pointed it out, you know, while listening into it. And he made mention to me and I was kind of like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. So if you've ever watched really any horror, demon, uh, paranormal movies about a house being haunted or whatever, or poltergeist, or if you've watched any of the shows that have to do with those things, you will know that the demons or the darker forces will portray themselves as children to get you to basically invite them in and let them stay. So what they do is they kind of do this trickery thing where, you know, if you see a darker energy, obviously you're going to try and get it out. Like you don't want it to stick around. But if you see this child entity, you're more willing to be like, okay, well, it's just a child. I feel sorry for him or her. You know, I don't want anything bad to happen to that child. I just want to protect them and love them. And that's just our nurturing nature. So we're more willing to accept the child into our lives or into our houses or whatever have you. And that's how the dark forces enter and then remain is because they portray themselves as children. Last week, I talked about this you know, monstrous demon thing that kind of comes out in and out. But then I also talked about this child and I didn't really think about it, but the child and this monster both have these glowing yellowish eyes. And my father was like, well, maybe they're one in the same. I didn't think about that, but now that he's got it in my head, I've been thinking about it nonstop. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. If you see a child, you know, on this tricycle riding down this lonely dirt road, you're wanting to help him. You're more willing to advance forward to this child and, you know, ask him questions. Why is this child out here in the middle of nowhere on his bike riding this road by himself? Where is his parents? Like you're wanting that nurturing part of us comes out and we want to help him. And that's how we kind of get sucked in more into it. And kind of brings us closer to the cemetery where this demon kind of comes out and other shadow figures and, you know, voices kind of come out and come to play. You see what I'm saying? Like it leads you into it. Like it draws you closer to the bad. So that's just something I wanted to throw out there real quickly because, you know, this monstrous demon thing does reside within the cemetery. If you listen to the different movies and different documentaries and things like that they can't portray themselves as children to bring us you know bring the sympathy and the nurturing out of us so I just want to plant that little nugget see what you guys think because I again did not think about that until after I recorded it I was already starting to think about this episode I haven't really got that out of my mind now because now it's making it's making more sense that the child because you know the child had glowing eyes too why would the child have glowing eyes Or why would the child be able to create this fog and, you know, creepy stuff happening? So that's just one one little nugget that I wanted to pull out there for you guys. Let y'all kind of talk about it. See what y'all think about it. Let me know. 
There are different things that happen down this cemetery and down this road. One of them is kind of on the funnier side, but it's also kind of creepy as well. So back in 2010, a woman described an encounter that she had while visiting the cemetery with friends. They saw this like bizarre man kind of just walking through the cemetery kind of aimlessly, like, you know, not really bothering anything. And he just kind of disappeared. Like, he was there. He was kind of walking around. They're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like, why is he just walking around this supposedly creepy haunted place? And then, you know, like, he's gone. So she didn't really think anything of it. Some days later, she's climbing into her shower. She turns to close the curtain. And in the doorway stood that very same man that she had seen in the cemetery. The man faded into the fog or into the steam as the woman started to scream for her husband to come to her aid, like to come help her. Like, hey, there's this man staring at me. You know, that's just one of those weird peeping Tom ghost stories. Like, it's kind of funny that it's a peeping Tom as a ghost, but, like, it followed her home. If you actually think about it, like, yeah, it's kind of one of the funnier sides of the ghost stories, but the fact that something attached to you and followed you home, and again, who's to say that it actually was a man? I, I, I don't know. So that's just one of the different ghosts. Apparently there's a peeping Tom or he was back in 2010. I haven't gotten any research that says he is still around. So it might have just been a one time thing. I mean, I don't know what the woman looked like or anything. That's just one of the accounts that happened. There was also another or several accounts actually of hands reaching out from the graves. So if you think about, you know, all the zombie movies you've ever watched and how, you know, you see that one hand starting to protrude out of the grave and kind of grasp to grab onto anything or grab onto somebody, that exact thing has happened in this cemetery. So there have been hands coming out of the graves trying to grab onto people or grab onto just the ground to kind of like pull themselves up That has also happened, and again, that also plays along with the handprints that are seen on vehicles down actual Demon Road. There have been plenty of vehicles who have gotten those handprints, as well as, you know, if they kind of sit still, they've gotten those pushes along the vehicles to kind of push them. So that's just one of those creepy things. Is it somebody trying to come actually get you? Is it somebody that's trying to attach to you? Or is it them trying to push you out to say you leave? You don't want to be in the cemetery? Again, I don't know. But one of the creepiest things I think that there is, is what happened with Google Earth. As I told you last week, Google Earth caught something like there was something. So if you know anything about Google Earth, Google Earth, basically you see those vehicles, they'll travel down the different roads to give you a realistic look into what you're seeing. Because if somebody just sees a map nowadays, they don't really know how to read it as good as like, you know, like my sister, she knows, okay, at the McDonald's, you're going to turn left. If you tell her, you know, turn right on first street, she has to pay attention really hard to figure out which one's first street. Uh, Google Earth is one of the amazing tools that just helps us really see the surroundings and see the areas and also helps us visit places that we can't exactly visit. I mean, I've even done it to where I've, you know, looked on Google Earth and looked at Chernobyl. So you could actually see Chernobyl right now in Google Earth. And it's kind of cool. But the kind of crazy thing is, is sometimes Google Earth catches things that it probably shouldn't capture. This is actually one of those things in the Martha Chapel Cemetery. So in the street view of the Google Maps or Google Earth, you see something in the picture. And I'm going to post the picture. In the first one, you don't really see anything. So in the first photo, you see a couple of headstones and then a couple trees. Nothing looks out of the ordinary, but you can zoom in to what you're actually looking at. Like So like if you're looking at a house, you can kind of zoom in closer Because obviously there's no road into that house, but you can still zoom in and see, you know, little details. So in the photo, what you're looking at is, you know, a couple of headstones, some trees. It looks like a gorgeous view. Nothing looks crazy. But then when you start to zoom in is when you start to kind of notice two little things. And you're like, okay, wait a minute. So when you zoom in a little bit more, you start to see something kind of behind the tree. So like you might not immediately look in at that tree. You might still be looking at the gorgeous, how the sun's hitting the lights. It looks gorgeous. 
And then, you know, you're kind of taking in the photo and then that's when you start to see something behind the tree. And you're kind of looking, you're like, what is that? Okay, is it some bark or, you know, like a little, what do you call it? I think they call knees or knobs or something. But you start to see that. And you're like, maybe it's one of that because it kind of still blends into the tree. So you're not, you're like, you're thinking about it, but not really. And then there's some fence line behind the tree. So you, you start to kind of wonder. But then when you really zoom in is when you actually see what is behind the tree. So this Google Earth and Google Maps thing really happened in 2018. So don't try to look on Google Maps now. It is not there, but you can still see what they saw back in 2018 thanks to the internet and what is actually behind this tree. So behind this tree, once you've zoomed in well enough, you see a face appearing out at you, like playing hide and seek almost. Like she, I'm assuming it's a girl because if, I'll post the pictures, but it looks like a little girl to me. And she looks like she's just kind of like peering like, you know, hey, peekaboo, I'm here. Kind of creepy, right? So you're focused on this little girl playing hide and seek almost at you. But then when you actually start to look even closer, there's quite possibly something even further back. Because I told you there were two things. So you have this creepy little girl who basically is about the same shade as the tree. She looks to be almost in like the shadowy part. Yeah, there's not that much sun hitting her, but even then she's still pretty pale. Solid, like so you can't see through her, but she's still really pale. Like there was nobody in the area with this Google Earth. It was just, they took a picture of this graveyard for Google and then that's it. So there's nothing else with this. It's just that little kid. But then, like I said, if you look further past, you'll see the fence line and then you see something dark and then you're like, okay, well, what's that? Maybe it's just something stuck to the fence because that's kind of what I thought initially was that it's just something stuck to the fence. But then if you kind of look closer at it, it also has kind of this human shaped, like you can kind of start to see like almost like a head and shoulders drooping down into something. I can't say that it's for sure a person. And like I said, it could still very well be something on the fence. But where it's at on the fence, there is a lot of sunlight hitting it. So it should be very well lit up to where you could see all the uh, tree branches and you know limbs and uh, brush around it are lit up. You can see it very well. But that one is like in the direct center of this lit up area. And it is pitch black. You cannot see it. So I, I don't know what that is. Is it that, you know, monster creature demon thing? off in the distance because there's still more cemetery past that so is it that is it a shadow person or is it something stuck to the fence i don't i don't know i like i said i will post all these pictures up on my facebook and instagram so that way you can see them but that is again that's one of those creepy things i can't tell you the martha chapel cemetery and demon road are both notorious for things happening I posted the Demon Road on some of, you know, Facebook groups that I'm in to kind of help promote it. And I've had people who say nothing absolutely happened. That's just a joke. You know, whatever have you. I didn't experience anything to others saying, I'm not going to say what happened to me, but I'm not going back. So that's one of those things that it you may see something and you may experience something. You may not. Kind of the same thing with the things following you home. You may have something follow you home. You may not. You might have that peeping Tom coming after you, you know, trying to take a quickie look at you. That would creep the crap out of me. But again, it might not happen. Same thing with the Bragg Road and everything else. You might experience some things. You might not. It kind of depends on how you interpret things. Me personally, I've never experienced actual physical things happening. Whereas my husband, you all know, he experiences things. He gets the feelings and he's seen like actual things you should know if you listened by the way you should listen to past episodes but he has actually seen some things and if you believe that's another thing if you believe i'm sure you're more receptive you'll see things but if you're one of those closed off persons that's like you know ghosts aren't real this is bull crap you know i don't know why anybody believes this you're probably not gonna see anything you're probably not gonna experience anything but you might I mean, these ghosts might be like, you know what? You don't believe? We'll make you believe. I don't know. This is one that I am super excited that we are going to go visit eventually. I don't know when exactly with the whole, you know, my work schedule, his work schedule, Halloween coming up with the halls of horror that we're helping out. I can't tell you when we're going to go visit, 
because it's not that far away. But we will go, and I will post pictures as always. Make sure that you're on my Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, all these different things, so that way you can see it. But definitely go see it for yourself. I mean, I'm not saying go in the middle of the night and get the demon pale pasty guy or the peeping Tom after you. You can go during the daytime, but go check it out. I mean, that's one of the things that I do is I try to keep these things local so that way people can go visit these areas that are in my area or, you know, kind of make road trips out of it. That's what we do. We go and we visit different places and even just for the history itself. It is a beautiful area. This is a historical marker. I will post the picture of the historical marker as well as, you know, the information on that. But it's just one of those things to get out and do stuff. You don't have to spend money to do these things other than gas. That's all that we have on Martha Chapel Cemetery and the Demon Road. Crazy stuff's happening. I can't explain it. All I can tell you is listen closely.